Hey class, this is Katrina Berg, and I just wanted to take a couple minutes to highlight some key points from your chapters for this week. And you'll be going over chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12. I want you to focus particularly on chapters 9, 10, and 11. We covered a little bit of chapter 12 in our discussion last week. Um, we'll be covering some more in chapter, um, or excuse me, week four in the coming week. But um, again, I just want you to be aware of it and I'll highlight a key point. Um, but let's focus on chapters 9, 10, and 11. For purposes of this video, chapter 9, we're talking about groups. And groups are a key part of organizations, organizational behavior, looking at the individual, looking at the group um, to accomplish a goal or objective. So groups, two or more individuals interacting and interdependent. Um, they've come together to achieve a particular goal or um, objective. There are different types of groups. You're probably more familiar with the formal group, which um, they are a dedicated or designated work group, and they're defined by structure. There are also informal groups, which are focused more on a social um, pull. They've come together for social needs. There are five stages of group development. You're looking at forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. So forming, they're coming together. Storming, um, they're working out conflict, figuring out roles. Norming is where things become normalized. They're now starting to work together. And then you reach stage four, which is you're actually doing the work. And then stage five, adjourning, which is when you're complete and you are likely breaking up because the work is completed. Not always the case, but let's just roll with that. So advantages and limitations of groups. Um, one of the advantages of assigning something to an individual is obviously that a decision can be made quicker. The disadvantage to that is you're not gonna have as much information or as much input um, a group generally achieves a greater um, input and more accuracy. So again, just a very quick example of do I give the um, goal or objective to an individual or a group. Strengths and weaknesses of groups, um, moving on to highlighting more of those. Groups can be time consuming. They can be dominated by one person and um, ambiguous responsibility can also happen. Who's really taking charge of what? The strengths of the groups include generating more complete information. Um, there's an increased diversity in views. Do also be aware of the term groupthink if you haven't heard of it before. Um, it really is um, when an individual's um, judgment, their reality, their mental efficiency will deteriorate because the group voice as a whole is larger. Um, so there is some loss in group think. Moving on to chapter 10, we're talking about teams. So with chapter 10, um, teams are a trend that is happening. More and more companies are using teams. They tend to be smaller than groups and they tend to be more flexible and able to react faster. So um, defining work group versus work team. Work group interacts primarily to share information, make decisions, um, and it's within an area of responsibility, whereas a work team is looking at individual efforts resulting in performance. And that performance then is greater than the sum of the individual inputs. There is an exhibit um, page in your books on page 275, exhibit 10-1, which further highlights um, the differences between work groups and work teams. There are five types of teams that I want you to be aware of. Problem-solving teams, self-managed teams, cross-functional teams, virtual teams, and a multi-team system. So that concludes chapter 10 highlights, chapter 11, which talks about communication. That's so critical in business and in organizations. Um, communication essentially is the um, transfer and understanding of meaning. Communication has four functions, control, motivation, emotional expression, and information. That's what they are getting across. 
there is a communication process. Um, the sender is sending information, they're encoding the information, they are then sending the message, it goes through a channel, then that message is decoded, and then the receiver processes it. Um, and in that process, be aware of noise, and um, that is a distraction to the message itself. Um, it could be something also that the receiver is um, distracted by. And then finally, feedback. Um, there is an opportunity for you to provide feedback in advance to receive feedback. Um, so communication goes both ways. The different types of communication can be oral, written, and nonverbal communication. Um, oral, you're looking at speeches, you're looking at one-on-one -on -one communication. Written, of course, can be email, um, it can be a formal document. And nonverbal is you're looking at facial expressions, potentially, you're looking at um, tone of voice. Um, so depending upon the channel of communication that you use, some things could be lost within that channel. Common barriers to communication include filtering, selective perception, information overload, emotions, language, silence, apprehension, lying. So by not responding to someone um, or being silent about your opinion or thought um, or not giving feedback, that's a barrier to communication. Um, just be aware of those um, so moving on to chapter 12, which is talking about leadership. Um, leadership and management. Leadership as defined is considered ability to influence a group towards achievement of a vision or goal. Whereas management is um, organizational, it's looking more at um, planning, controlling, directing. Not all managers are leaders, and not all leaders are managers. You need both in an organization and both can exist in an org organization. So that's it for chapter highlights class. Let me know if you have any questions and make it a great week. Thanks.